Okay, folks, this, this is going to be one of my favorite segments right here. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to turn your life around, but you're stuck? Have you been struggling to make ends meet and can't seem to find a way? That's a big problem out there today. Well, my next guest has answers and a lot of secrets to breaking through. She is a six-time best-selling author, one of the most sought-after motivational speakers out there. She's a millionaire entrepreneur, and she is a true inspiration. Please welcome my friend, Lisa Nichols. <laughs> Hey, Lisa. Hey, darling. How so you nice feeling? Nice to see you. Good. I'm wonderful. This is great for you. What's been your biggest accomplishment, you think? Bouncing back, number one, is refusing to listen to the negative chatter in my own head, refusing to uh, listen to other people's perception of me, creating something from absolutely nothing. So I got, you know, there's the books, there's the TV, there's the, all that stuff. But my biggest accomplishment is being willing to give myself a thousand second chances. And every time I got to 9.99, I pressed reset. Yeah. I didn't ask permission. I gave notice. Yeah. At some point, I have to stop asking, can I be great? Can I be brilliant? Can I be okay and still be accepted? I just stopped asking permission and just gave notice unapologetically, and not in a braggadocious way, not in a way that shrunk anyone else, in right. a way that said, I only got one life, and I'm going to ride this one till the wheels fall off. And then all the other stuff came. Wow. As a result of a decision I made. Right. But it was a decision. You... It was a decision. But it was, and it didn't come from, you know, a motivational experience. It didn't come from a, an inspiring teacher. It came from hitting rock bottom. Okay. Okay, let's talk about that. Because <laughs> yeah. this was the thing that when you and I were talking that really s struck me. Because I had been there. Yeah. And I just wanted to hear how you had turned yeah. it around. Because you can be rock bottom yeah. and turn it around. That's the best turnaround, because at rock bottom, hell, ain't no other way right. to go. Right. You got to go right. up. So right. that's a great time. You climbed to the top. Tell everybody about this journey. I struggled all through school. The last time I took English class, I got a fail. And my English teacher said I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. The last time I took a speech class, same year, I got a D minus in speech, and my speech teacher said, Lisa, quote, unquote, I recommend you never speak in public that you get a desk job. So that was the beginning of my life. That was, the, that was my 19-year-old experience. And then I go on, and I'm trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. I was obedient. I went and got a job in accounting. I was in the collection department for seven years. Y'all don't know I'm dangerous to accounting. I'm, <laughs> I'm just dangerous. And I'm in collections, and you know, you should never put a broke person in collections. <laughs> Never, because everybody's reasons sound good to me. <laughs> not, not, I know it sounds funny, but it was real. Not only did I say, girl, don't you worry about paying that. I'm going to take your name off the list. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody went to jail because I was in I got fired from five different jobs. Yeah. And then I got pregnant with my son unexpectedly. And then at eight months, my son's father went to prison. I had to get on government's assistance to have my baby. I was on WIC, Women, Infant, and Children, to feed my child. And when my son was eight months old, I went to the ATM to get $20 out the bank because I didn't have any Pampers for him. And in order to get $20 out, you got that $20 in. I had $11.42. And I still can't tell the story without getting emotional because it's my story. Mm -hmm. yeah. For two days, I had to wrap my son in, in a towel. But something happened, Steve, in those two days. I was at rock bottom. I was broke, and I was broken. Inglewood, California, my son laying on his back at eight months. I have a towel over him, and I have my hand on his stomach saying, don't you worry, Jelani. Mommy will never be this broke again. And I made a decision. I was bankrupt. And every stinking thinking I had, I was bankrupt and trying to protect my pride. Mm -hmm. I was bankrupt and trying to be all that in a bag of chips and a bowl of grits falsified. Mm -hmm. I was bankrupt in trying to not ask anyone for help. I was bankrupt in everything that was holding me and keeping me where I was. Mm -hmm. I've always talked a good game, mm -hmm. but I wasn't doing anything with my gift. Mm -hmm. And all that thing about potential, I was tired of having potential. I wanted to have my now. And I looked at that baby at eight months, and I said, I want to transform your life. Because you didn't ask to come into this chaos. Come on. As an African-American male child in South Central Los Angeles, with a single mother whose father's in prison, he had a 66% chance of going to prison himself, not on my watch. 
Mm. Not on my watch. So if I have to be willing to drastically transform myself so that I can become the woman that I know I can be. Right. And that's what I began to do. I was radical. What did you do, Lisa? What, what did you do to change your life? First, um, I realized I couldn't grow with people who were struggling like me. That whole, I don't want to leave nobody behind. No, I don't want to stay with y'all. Right. You don't even, you don't even want to be here. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to be the queen of this block. Yeah. And I became OK with the fact that it doesn't make me any less committed to my community, committed to my culture, committed to my family. The best thing I can do for you is not stay here with you. That's right. When I got that, I went to places I'd never seen before. I went to conferences where people were talking about money, talking about prosperity, yeah. talking about, it was like, no habla espanol, what y'all talking about? ROIs and PPMs and term agreements and capital fundraising and bottom lines and what is it? What, what is, I'm, I'm going to stay until I learn what you're talking about. I went to the same conference 42 times. And there I raised $532,000 in capital for my company to start my dream. And my dream was to transform teen lives. I want to teach teens how to fall madly in love with themselves and how to make integrity-based decisions. And I got it funded, and I started working. And that was the beginning of me rescuing myself. I realized that I am my rescue. No one else is my rescue. Mm. I am yeah. my rescue. That is, see, my daddy's famous line to me was, the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. Right. He said that that was all. It was just third grade education. Best thing you can do for poor people, boy, is not be one of them. I got to do something right. if I want to go back to effectively change some people's lives. Right. Now, you, you, have, you have been known for helping people break through. I, explain how, how this is done or what you do exactly. Well, first of all, you have to recognize, and this is the part where people resist, they come to me for help all the time. Okay, great, let's find out what's in breakdown. I'm cool, I just need to get back. No, something's in breakdown. A breakdown doesn't mean you need a white jacket and you on the floor. It means something in my life isn't the exact way I want it. We always have breakdown. It's just how we manage our breakdown. Right. So the number one thing is to be authentic and transparent about what's not working. Even in your yeah. grandeur, something ain't working. Right. You know, I mean, the reality is somebody lost 40 pounds and I found it. <laughs> and I'm trying to return it to his rightful owner. <laughs> I'm just saying. So. That's what I'm working on right now. The yeah. best thing I can do is be honest out loud about it. Right. We try to protect and hide too much. We try to defend and protect too much. We live in proving. So first thing I get them to do is, is what are you hiding, protecting, proving, or defending? Let's identify that. Now, what's the distance between that and where you want to be? And then the rest is, are you willing to do something you've never done before? Most people don't. They want to have a grander life, a more exciting life, doing exactly what they were doing. See, my grandmother said that conviction and comfort don't live in the same block. Mm. If you're going to be convicted about something, you might have to go through some discomfort. But if you want to stay comfortable, why don't you just relax where you are, because that's where you're going to stay. Right. And so are you willing to reinvent who you are? Are you willing to kill away the procrastination? Are you willing to kill away the excuses, the blame game? I never let people to call me a single mom by my title. I'm Lisa Nichols, who happens to be a single mother. Don't define me by my circumstances. Define me by my intention. So it's just really being willing. Most change will happen here first. Right. And if you don't change there, you can win the lotto and still end up broke because I'm a slingshot. You're going to slingshot back to your mental comfort zone. Most people do. Yes. 85% of the people who hit the lotto become uh, bankrupt within three years. Yes. If you can't handle $300, 300000 same philosophy at work, right. man. You're going to lose it. I tell you what, this is going to be great. Lisa and I are going to be teaming up to help uh, one of our viewers who's reached a dead end in her life. We're going to help her break through right after this commercial break. Lisa Nichols, my girl. Love it. Great girl. Coming up next, she's a great mother and wife, but needs help with her own life. I'm in a rut, and I feel like I failed myself. Will Lisa's real-life lessons be the breakthrough she's been looking for? So the tongue in your mouth mm -hmm. and the tongue in your shoe yeah. are going in two different directions. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and later, Steve's spectacular surprise for a night she'll never forget. You can't go without the perfect ride. <laughs> Hey, look, 
back. Uh, I'm back with famed motivational speaker, New York Times best-selling author uh, Lisa Nichols. Now we're uh, going to be speaking to one of my viewers uh, who's stuck and needs help breaking through. Where's Jen? Hi, Jen. Okay. Hi. Uh, what's going on in your life? I'm in a rut, and I feel like I failed myself. I've been a mother for 19 years, and when I got pregnant with my children, I gained about 50 pounds, and I've never been able to lose the weight. I've been on every diet that you can imagine. I need your help breaking through. Jen, first off, um, all coaching and love doesn't come served with warm cookies and milk. So may I coach you transparently and authentically, even if it doesn't feel good, if it stings a bit? Sure. I see you cringing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> right, because the truth sometimes stings. Right. Okay? Yep. So the reality is you're inside of a decision. There's something emotionally that's causing you to want it but not go get it. Now, we love to blame it on our kids. Yeah. But when my son got 11, I had to stop blaming the 40 on him. <laughs> like, that's not even fair, y'all. Right. Right? Right. Yep. So you gained weight to have a child, and the child came out, and then you had a choice. That's the reality, and I'm living that with you. Yeah. Okay, sis? Yeah. And so now there's something. There's a comfort zone. You, you're married. Your husband's there. There's something that occurs emotionally when you think about yourself sexy at your ideal body. You see how your, your, your face changes? There's the emotion coming up. There's an emotional decision that's holding you to it. What's that thing? And, I, and you don't get to go home and figure it out. You don't get to, I don't know. I don't know is a sexy excuse to not work on it now. Okay. Okay? Sure. So, there's something about the idea of being fit and sexy. What does that bring up for you? First, top of mind. It's a little scary. There you go. There you go. Why would you run towards something that's what? Scary. Why would you run towards something that's scary? Yeah. We say we want it, but actually, if we go back layers and layers, there's something there that's incongruent with what we say we want. So the tongue in your mouth mm -hmm. and the tongue in your shoe yeah. are going in two different directions. Okay. <laughs> right? I can't open wide, but I got to show y'all, right? It's going in two different directions. Do you get that? I do. So you're scared of what, what it, life would look like if you're sexy, yeah. but you say you want to lose weight. Yeah. So the work is, what do you need to do to be comfortable and not scared? Don't work on the weight. Okay. It'll take care of itself if you work on the why am I scared and what am I scared of. And whatever that is, handle it. And whenever that thing is handled, promise you, baby, it will start melting away and you will barely recognize your life. Thank you. Do you, like, can I ask you a question? Certainly. Do a lot of the, um, you know, your circle of close friends, do you all have the, the same, like, dilemma? No, they all tell me that I'm crazy and that I look fine, I don't have a problem, but that's not how I feel, so then... How do they look? Well, to me, they yeah. look fine. They don't have a problem. <laughs> okay. Let's imagine you all kind of in the same club. Okay. You all, everybody has some unwanted weight. Yeah. Everybody's got some unwanted pounds. Not in the club by yourself, but right. if that's the club you're a member of, if you shrink down and get sexy, can you still be in that club? Right. Or will they be going over here going, uh -huh, right. really? Because that's what association brings on participation in my life. If you're, all your friends are there and you all complimenting each other with you crazy, you look fine, and you don't really feel fine, and you telling them they look good, and they don't really feel like they look great, but that's the club you in. Right. Hell, if you get out the club, you might lose your friends. Can I just tell you one thing to tell your friends? Yeah. When you go home, say, do me a favor. No longer hold me accountable to the woman that I am. Hold me accountable to the woman that I'm becoming. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Go and get fine. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> and I think that's the greatest thing yes. that I learned from you when we were talking in Florida was we, okay, we can have this breakthrough conversation. Right. But let's identify right. what the holdup part is. Right. And you told me, she tells, she said, Steve, now I'm going to teach you how this is done, but it's not going to taste good to you. This is really good. I love you, Lisa. I want to I wanna have you more. Look, for more information on uh, Lisa Nichols and her program, it's uh, called Motivating the Masses. I want you to go over to steveharveytv.com right now. Check it out. Get you some more information. We'll be right back. Lisa Nichols, everybody.